Miniatures these days look absolutely incredible, but they can all use a little bit of extra custom 3D printed flair. Welcome to the Tabletop Battlefield. I'm Jason and I've got a simple introduction to Blender tutorial for today. We're making these really cool looking 3D printed missile trails from miniatures from games like Battletech or Warhammer 40k. Head over to Blender.org, download this awesome software, and let's get started. When you open up Blender, this is the screen you're going to see. To start, let's just click anywhere outside of this little box. Now we want to clear out all this default stuff. We're not going to use it. So press the letter A, followed by the letter X, and this is going to bring up our delete box. Just left click on delete, and we're good to go there. Now we're going to start building out our missile trail. Now I want to add a mesh. A mesh is your basic 3D shape inside of Blender. So to do that, I'm hitting Shift A, and then I want to hover over mesh right here and choose Icosphere. Whenever you add something in Blender, there will be a little dialog down here in the lower left hand corner. Click on this triangle. And for subdivisions, I want to set that to 4. This is going to add a bit more detail to our shape. Then I want to set the radius of the sphere. So this is half the diameter. I'm going to set it to 1.2. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than default. And now one note about measurements here, this little M, because in Blender, the default measurement size for real world things is a meter. But when you export these objects out for 3D printing, what is a meter inside Blender is going to be one millimeter for your slicer program. So just think of one meter as one millimeter in this case. All right, so we're going to left click somewhere on the screen to get rid of that dialog box. Now to look around your viewport, you can press down your middle mouse button and move your mouse cursor around. To pan the screen, hit the shift key, then the middle mouse button, and you can move things around like that. So our first step here, I want to left click on our sphere. It's going to turn orange. And then I want to jump into edit mode. So press tab, and this is going to turn on edit mode here inside Blender. And what you're going to see now is there's all sorts of little dots. A mesh, which is the basic 3D object in Blender, is made of a bunch of little dots called vertices. And that's what you're seeing right here. I want to rotate my viewport until this green line here is kind of running through the middle of our sphere. At least where you can see where it runs through the middle of the sphere. Left click somewhere outside our sphere to deselect all the vertices. And what I want to do is zoom in. So to zoom in, you can scroll in with the mouse wheel. Scroll out is going to be zoom out. And I want to select the vertice where this green line basically intersects our sphere, which is right there. So I'm going to left click on the vertice and I'm going to turn that one orange. I'm going to zoom out a bit here and look at a slightly different angle. And what I want to do is create an acorn shape. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to the top bar. And there's a little kind of looks like a sun with a planet's orbit in it. It's called proportional editing. I want to click and turn that on. It turns blue. And then the drop down next to it, I want to select Sphere. I'm going to press the letter S for Scale. In this case, it's going to let me manipulate some of the vertices here of this object. So I press the letter S. And now what you see is a little gray outline circle. You want to use your mouse wheel to make that maybe about half the size of the sphere itself. As you move your mouse cursor towards the vertice, you're going to see the right side of the mesh scale down and get a little bit smaller. So you can see now I've got a bit of an acorn shape. I'm going to turn off proportional editing. I'm done with that. Now I'm going to press tab to return to object mode. Now object mode is where you manipulate objects in their entirety. Edit mode is where you can go in and manipulate individual pieces of the objects, like vertices like you saw there. What I want to do is take a number of these and align them in a line along this green line and make the rough shape of a missile smoke trail. First things first, I want to press the letter N on my keyboard. And it's going to open up a whole bunch of numbers over here, which describe this particular object. We're not going to worry too much about them, but I'll explain this one section we care about right here that's called scale. But what I need to do is left click on our little acorn here. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And what's going to happen now, a new object is going to be created. And as I move the mouse around, the object is going to fly over all the screens. I basically am controlling its placement right now. Now, long story short, placing objects 
in Blender can be a little tricky if you're not used to it. So what we're gonna do in this case is constrain the movement to an axis. With 3D modeling, just like the real world, there's three axes, right? You have sort of forward and back, left and right, and up and down. Now the green line I keep talking about here is called the Y axis. And in this case, we're gonna use that to represent forward and back. So at this point here, with I saw this object kind of being dragged around, I want to press the letter Y. What that just did is it locked it to be able to move only along the Y axis. And I want to place it so it's overlapping our previous object a little bit, and then left mouse click to put it down. And it looks halfway decent, all right. Just like in edit mode where you use the letter S to scale vertices, you also use the letter S in object mode to scale entire objects. Press S, and you're gonna move your mouse cursor towards your object. And what you wanna look at is that little numbers I brought up there. You wanna make the scale value go down to about 0.9, because that means it's gonna be about 90% of the original size, and then left click. So you can see here my scale values are all 0.906. And if I move my view around, you can tell the new acorn's a little bit smaller than the previous one. I'm gonna repeat this a few more times. Each time watching this number here for scale go down by 0.1 until the very last acorn is gonna be a scale value of 0.5. So shift D, Y, move it out. Scale it down until I'm down to 0.8-ish. That looks about right. Make sure that they're overlapping a little bit. If you find they're not overlapping, what you can do is you can use the G key, which also allows you to move objects around, followed by the Y to constrain it to the Y axis and move it backwards until it overlaps a little bit. Okay, let's do this three more times. All right, so you've got some that's a very rough pile of acorns. It's kind of like a missile trail, right? Kind of. Let's start adding some more interesting detail to it. And what I first wanna do is adjust the position of each of these acorns to the left or the right a little bit. Therefore, it's not like a nice uniform stack. It's got a little bit of turbulence in the missile engine. So starting with the second one here, I wanna left click on it. I wanna press G to move it. But this time I wanna lock it to the X axis, which is that pink line you see running across your screen. So press X, and then I'm gonna move this one up a tiny bit. This one down a tiny bit, G then X over, G then X, and there you go. Now you've got your acorns a little bit offset that way, and I want to do the same kind of thing going up and down. So once again, let me select the acorn I want to move, press G, and this time I want to lock it to the Z axis, so press the letter Z. This is your up and down in the world of Blender. And do the same kind of thing just adding a little bit of offset for each of our acorns. All right, so now you've got something that looks a little bit more like a randomized turbulent trail. At this point, let's save our file, Control S, and save the file wherever you want. And I also wanna introduce the undo operation. Let's say I somehow accidentally delete that guy right there, Control Z. That can undo operations just like other programs. In Blender, most of the time when something seems to go horrifically wrong, Pressing Control Z a few times is gonna be your best friend. So what's next now is I wanna merge all these acorns, which are currently individual objects, and I wanna merge them into one. So I'm gonna left click on the last one, and then holding the Shift key, I wanna then left click on each acorn behind it, and then press Control J to join them all together into one object. Now it's time to take this stack of acorns and make it look more like smoke. How we're gonna do that is use something called a modifier. Now modifiers in Blender can be found over here in the right hand side underneath this little wrench. So click that wrench right there. And a modifier, as the name suggests, is a mathematical operation to alter how an object in Blender looks or functions or just something like that. So what we want to do is click on Add Modifier, and the first one I want to choose is Displace. Now you're going to see it get all puffy. We'll fix that in a moment. And what this does is we can use something called a texture to alter how this object looks. Texture in Blender is kind of what you might imagine in the real world. It's like a pattern or something else that normally appears on the surface of an object to alter how it visually looks. 
However, in this case, we can take that visual distortion and turn it into actual physical distortion of our object. For these next few steps, be sure to follow them exactly. I want to click this new button right here, and all of a sudden, they get really small. We'll fix that in a moment. Where it says texture here, I want to left click there, and I'm going to change the name to smoke, just so I know what I'm dealing with. Then if I go back to this tower of icons right here, the very bottom looks like a checkerboard. Let's click that, and you'll see that I've got something up here called smoke selected. This is the texture I just created a moment ago with a new button. What I want to do is for type, I want to change that from image or movie. So left click on it and choose clouds. Then we're going to change the size value. You can do a couple things here. You can either click on these arrows to increase or decrease it, or you can just left click on it and punch in some kind of number. In this case, we'll work with numbers that are well less than one. So I just punched in 0.5. And you want to get something that kind of roughly looks like puffy smoke. And I'm saying very roughly looking at it because right now it's kind of pointy, but I've got the basic shape of puffy smoke. You can play around these other options. They may do some things, may not. They don't always do everything in this particular case, but feel free to play around with some other things. But you know, you might actually screw things up if you go a little too fancy on the buttons and numbers right now. <laughs> So right here, I got a size of 0.5, depth of 3. That looks pretty good at the moment. But now I want to make this a little bit more refined and less bumpy and more kind of rounded. So we're going to return to our modifiers properties right here and left click on that wrench. And I want to add one more modifier. This time I want to choose subdivision surface underneath the generate column. It may take a while depending on your computer. I've added a modifier that starts to smooth things out and actually adds a little bit more detail to our object. One thing I want to change here is where it says levels of viewport. I want to left click on the right arrow to make that two. And what you've got is something that does kind of look like puffy smoke. Now keep in mind that this object here is really tiny. It's like less than a half an inch long, maybe between a quarter and half an inch. So it looks kind of big right now because it's on the computer. When we get in the miniature, it's going to look a lot more like puffy smoke. And frankly, right there is a good chunk of our tutorial. And that's pretty much how you end up creating a missile trail, right? You add these little acorn shapes. You can rotate them and move them around to the orientation of the trail, apply a few basic modifiers like this, and you've got something that looks pretty good for miniature purposes. Now, the one thing we do want to add is the missile itself. But before we add the missile, I want to take these modifiers and actually formally apply them to our miniature. Because right now, if I press tab and go to edit mode, you can see that we still have our original object. Modifiers work in such a way where they modify the end result of an object without actually modifying the original structure of an object. Which for Blender animation, things like that, that can be great. But for 3D printing, we want to make sure that our original object has been formally modified and changed in the new shape. So to do that, I need to apply each of these modifiers. And you always want to apply modifiers from the top to the bottom. Left click up here on the Displace modifier. Under this little drop down arrow, you've got Apply. Click that. And then do the same thing for the Subdivision Surface modifier. Now if we press Tab to go to Edit Mode, you can see that I've got a much more detailed structure that looks like our final end modified result. Save our object out, and now I'm going to create a missile. Shift A to add a new mesh. I want to choose cylinder, and it's kind of in the wrong orientation. So what I want to do is press R for rotate. I want to then press X to rotate it along the X axis, and you can see I kind of can tilt it to where it's almost on its side. So that looks about right to me, and then left click. Then I'm going to go up here to here's our little number box that's been sitting around here. And you can see now that X is about minus 92.2. Well, 90 degrees is you know a nice perpendicular rotation. So I'm going to click on that minus 92 and change it to minus 90. And now I have a nice clean rotation to our cylinder that's laying on its side. All right, so I'm going to use the G then Y key to move our cylinder up to the front of the smoke trail here. And then I'm going to press S to scale it down until I think the diameter is about what I think would look good 
for this missile. Now keep in mind this is a miniature and miniatures generally need to be a little bit larger than the what they should be scaled down. I know like in Battletech the missiles are really really tiny but in order to make this print not fail disastrously you probably want something that's somewhere around the 0.6 to 1 millimeter size. I'm gonna take a gamble and try to do 0.75 so this is a very tiny little missile. <laughs> Hopefully that works. If not, you can always come back in, resize it later, and <laughs> fix things from there. When it comes to scaling an object, just like how you can constrain movement along an axis, you can also constrain scaling along an axis. So press S then Y, and that's gonna let me scale this missile here only along the Y axis. So something like that is probably pretty good. And then I wanna press G and Y and kind of embed it in the smoke a little bit. Let's now add a nose cone on here. I'm gonna press tab. And then I wanna left click somewhere outside to deselect all the vertices of the particular cylinder. Now we're gonna do something called the box select. So if I press B, you're gonna notice these crosshairs appear on your screen. Hold down the left mouse button and you form this box and you want to select all the vertices up here in the front of the cylinder. Then I'm going to press the letter E for extrude and you're going to see I'm going to have another like piece of the cylinder come out of the first one. Let's go something like that looks pretty good. Then I can press S to scale it down and I can scale those guys down pretty small to like that. And that's going to look like a missile nose cone. So now let's add a few fins just so there's a little bit more detail to this missile. For that, I want to do Shift A and then add a new mesh, in this case a cube. I'm going to move it up here using G, then Y. And I'm going to start scaling it down each axis at a time until I've got something that's probably looking pretty good, like that. Obviously those are a bit boxy fins, so to correct that problem, I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. And now what I wanna do is I wanna change how I'm looking at this world here. Hold down Z, and you're gonna bring up a bunch of options. I wanna move my mouse cursor to wireframe and click that. What you're looking at now is a see-through x-ray version of your object. Here's another fun tool I'm gonna to introduce you to. It's called the loop cut. Do control, then R, and you can see now there's a little bit, if I put my mouse cursor in the right spot, there's a bit of a yellow rectangle right there. Just left click and then left click again. Don't move your mouse for doing that, just left click twice. And then what you've got going on here is basically added some more detail to my um, mesh for the fins. And then I wanna left click outside the mesh and then using a box select, I wanna select those two and then you can go ahead and do a second box select and then select this side of the fin as well. Press G, then Y, and now I can sweep them back. And by having this X geometry right here, it gives me a bit of a hinge point and lets me create a bit of a triangle shape for my fins. All right, let's press Z, then solid. And now you can see I've got, yeah, they look good enough. They're tiny little triangle fins. That's plenty good enough for this scale of a miniature. The last thing to do is add then fins that are going vertically. So I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate and immediately left click. I'm not gonna move anything. But then what I'm gonna do is rotate them along the Y axis until they're perpendicular to this set of fins. Because now there's two sets of fins sitting right there. You can't tell it, but just trust me, they're there. So press R for rotate and then Y to lock the rotation along the Y axis and then move it until it looks about right to you. And then once again over here, we can see now our rotation is minus 92. If we change that to minus 90, we're gonna get a nice perpendicular rotation. So that is looking pretty good. What I'm gonna do now is left click on our missile body and then shift left click on each of the fins do control J to join that all together. And then I wanna do shift D and move an extra copy off to the side. 
That way, if I ever want to make more of these missile trails, I've got another copy of the identical missile that I can use for that add-on effect to my miniature. Finally, left click on the missile, shift left click on our missile trail, control J to turn that all into one object. And we're just about ready to send this guy over to our slicer program and print it out. The very last step is to press tab to go back into edit mode. And then I want to use that Z and then choose wireframe. If you made it this far in the tutorial, I think you can handle a little bit more advanced navigation techniques and it's really not that advanced. So on your numpad, which is a set of numbers on the right side of the keyboard, press seven. And now you notice you're looking pretty much straight down from the top view of your miniature. And what I want to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to box select oh, a sizable chunk of the back of the smoke trail. At this point, press G, then Y. I want to pull it back and then S for scale, Y for Y axis, and zero. And what I just did is I turned that whole section of the smoke trail into being perfectly flat press G and Y, and I want to move that back up against the end of the smoke trail. So now I've given basically the smoke trail a flat back. And the reason for that is it's going to make attaching this piece to your miniature a little bit easier, at least probably. All right, press tab to exit out of edit mode. I'm going to save my file one more time. And the last thing I'm going to do is export this guy as an STL file. So we're going to go up to file, choose export STL. It's going to bring up a dialog box where you can choose to save your STL file out to. Give it a name down here. And the important thing is you want to choose the option for selection only. If you don't have the object you're exporting selected and choose this option, it's going to export every single object in your Blender file, which is usually not what you want to do. So with that selected, you can leave these things alone and go ahead and choose export STL. With these missiles 3D printed, the first thing I did is I used a pair of nippers and cut off a little bit of some of the ends of the missile trails. This is going to let me add on three of them, the same print, and now it's going to look like they're launching in sequence. Then I glued each trail onto the miniature with some super glue, being very careful not to have them fall off because these are very fragile pieces. The first step of painting was a light gray color, and I followed that up with a black wash. Once the wash had dried, I painted some reds, oranges, and a little bit of white right behind the missile to give the idea that there's a bit of an engine flare from the missile as it flies away from the battle mech. Finally, I painted the missile in a light gray, and we're gonna call it done. To be honest with you, since the rest of the catapult's missiles are painted in bright blue, I probably should put a little bit of blue paint on the tips. <laughs> That's all I have for you today. If you like this Blender tutorial video, hit that like button here on YouTube. And I've also got some more videos in a playlist for Blender for tabletop gaming, as well as a couple videos for painting up Kellhound's Battle Max. And finally, there's also a link to my Etsy store where if you're looking for sci-fi terrain for six millimeter giant stoppy robot games, I sell some buildings for that purpose as well. So once again, I'm Jason. Thanks for watching and have a great week.